Welcome on Fair and Square. Our guest today is CEO of DataWind Limited, producer of Akash Tablet, Mr. Sunit Singh Tuli. Welcome on Fair and Square, Mr. Tuli. Thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity. You're known as the pioneer, you know, to have introduced cheap tablets in the world. But before, you know, I dwell into that area, for the benefit of my viewers, uh, I just wanted to understand that how did you reach Canada because you are a Canadian citizen and uh, you s your business is operated out of Canada. So we ended up in Canada in 1979 after the revolution in Iran. My, my family left India in 1976. Uh, my father ran a construction business that uh, got projects in the Middle East. Uh, we ended up in Iran in 76. Uh, they had a revolution in Iran in 79. And subsequent to that, my father wanted to be in a more stable country or a more stable environment. And from that, he ended up in uh, northern Alberta. He got a project in, in Fort McMurray, Alberta. And uh, that's where we ended up in 1979. So 35 years now in Canada and about four years prior to that in Iran. So Two upheavals uh, the family witnessed. Yeah. In fact, my father was about 11 when partition happened. And, and he had, had a chance to see uh, how you know your life goes through significant upheaval. And then he saw it again uh, during the revolution in Iran. And at that time, he decided he wanted to be in an environment uh, that would be stable long term. And he chose Canada for that reason. And while you were growing up, uh, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? So uh, because we came from a family uh, business environment, um, we, we, we had some of that spirit in us anyways. And, and late in university, my brother started a project to build a white format fax machine in, in the late 80s. There was no internet, uh, fax machines was the internet of that day. And he wanted to build the fax machines for the industrial uh, business, uh, for large format documents. And th that became our very first business. Uh, we were lucky enough that we took it public, we took that company public on the NASDAQ in uh, 1995. And uh, unfortunately, I, I never had the experience of giving a job interview, making a resume, uh, which, which you know, I, I almost miss. I, I wish I had spent uh, at least a few years uh, working uh, in some environment. You know, going through your um, bio data, you know, I saw that you're kind of your whole work. You're a serial entrepreneur, a lot of lot of products. But I guess your your fame, kind of, you know, you got famous once with Akash, the cheapest tablet which you created, and which was launched by the government of India in 2011. Uh, to give it to students government, in government schools. Uh, how did the idea of creating such a product come about? So there were many things that sort of came together at the same time. Um, Steve Jobs and his communication address at Stanford University talked about it as sort of joining the dots. You know, there's this belief that life leads you in certain directions. Um, we were in the technology business and we had created a technology for delivering internet in low bandwidth environments. And that's what we were trying to do, is trying to create technology for low bandwidth, low cost environments. But having taken two companies public on the NASDAQ, there was a philanthropic side to us because we had some personal wealth. We were supporting uh, an orphanage in India. We were supporting a couple of schools in India. And we had a sense of s the challenges around the educational system in India. Uh, I was at uh, the age of um, eight uh, when I left India. And I still remember the kids I used to play bante with, marbles with in the yard. And at that age, I didn't have a sense of economic class. I didn't have a sense of he's the Mali's kid and he's the driver's kid or whatever. It was just kids playing that environment. And through the years, as I made trips back to India, I just sort of started to realize where we ended up was very clearly linked to the quality of education we received. So now, there was this personal area of passion, believing that education needed to be uh, no child left behind. Education needed to be an environment where, where it was all inclusive and, and all empowering. Uh, and at the same time, now we had a technology that could impact education. And so all of those things came together. Um, and one of the things we discovered was that what keeps the masses away uh, in places like India and elsewhere from technology, from computers and internet access specifically, is cost, is affordability. Um, 
even with cell phones, people used to say a few years ago, well, who's going to teach the poor man how to use a cell phone? And the reality is that 900 million Indians today use cell phones, but only 10% use the internet. But already, I mean, you mentioned that, you know, affordability was an issue yeah. and you kind of managed cracking that code. Uh, but how has been, how has your Indian experience been till now? It I mean, how successful have you been in integrating technology and the, with the Indian education system? So, uh, reasonably okay. Um, uh, you know, uh, in India, everything takes longer than you want and everything takes longer than you hope for it to. The reality is, that when we entered this market in 2011, the total market for tablets in India was only 250,000 units. That's it. And nobody believed that the market for tablets would increase very significantly because people perceived the solution to be a computer. You know, they're computers that are going to get sold, and if not, then they're going to be smartphones that are going to come in. We believe that in addition to that, the tablet will be the middle game. The tablet will be the first computer for everybody. And everybody told us that this is not possible. 80% of the market in every country seems to be Samsung and Apple, and it's going to be these companies that dominate. And we feel, felt that there was an extra market, that there's almost a f billion forgotten Indians, that when you get past the top 200 million or so, there's a significant portion of this country that's going to be never able to afford Samsung and Apple devices, and there's an opportunity to create a first computer for that customer. And to get to that first computer, you've got to break the price barrier. And when we did that, the demand and the interest was so, so significant that the market went from 250,000 units in 2011 to 3.1 million units in 2012 to 4.5 million units in 2013. But that's so, so in two years, the market exploded 15 times, whereas the PC market stagnated. In our position, for a small little company that had no presence in India. Uh, two years ago, we, we had no identity, no presence, no infrastructure in India. We're now the largest supplier of tablets in India. In the but do you think you've been able to integrate it in the system, in the education system? To some because degree. Because that, that was the main focus. To, to some degree. You see, there, there are two elements to it. One is the government, the government's rollout, and the government's deployments. The second element is the commercial and the individual independent deployments. We've sold 1.2 million units in the Indian market in this period of time. As I mentioned, we're the largest supplier. Studies show you that in the last quarter, we outsold both Apple and Samsung by large margins. Uh, most, quarter, most quarters, we outsell Apple by a so factor of two. Uh, the private, small, and large institutions continue to deploy the product. On the government side, everything was slower. But it wasn't just slower on the federal government side. Everything's been slower, even with all of the state governments and the, all of the state government promises. You know, the state government of Punjab made a promise to pr deliver tablets to their students. And while their intent still exists and they're making some effort in that, in that direction, now we're two years after that election promise and they've not been able to do so. so the state government of Uttar Pradesh did the same think, thing. Do you think governments lack focus when they when they kind of just create their manifestos or just announce? I don't think it's an issue of, of, of lack of focus. I think it is the complexity in execution. So, and, and I will explain. You, you think they have a roadmap at least? Oh, for sure. And I believe that they will execute. So I, I'm confident that Punjab so will execute. So what is a roadmap in the sense that what are they trying to achieve by giving tablets? So if you look at the problems with the Indian educational system, the difficulty with the with the Indian educational system is that the quality of education is directly linked to the quality of teacher. And the quality of teacher, the moment you get out of metropolitan areas, deteriorates very significantly. A uh, professor by the name of Sugata Mitra did a lot of tests around this. And one of the studies he did showed that the same math test he gave in Delhi that was generating 68% scores, if we went out 150 kilometers from Delhi, the same math test was generating 40% in scores. If we went out 200 kilometers from Delhi, the same math test was generating 20% in scores. And what he showed was that the best quality teachers in India don't end up where a billion people live, where 70 plus percent of the population lives in rural India, they end up in the big cities. But you, what you're trying so to imply is that technology standardizing this so education? What so what technology does is it empowers both the teacher and the student by standardizing the quality of education that gets delivered. The, the traditional means of education 
is that a teacher lectures, but the learning doesn't happen in the lecture. The learning actually happens when you do your homework and you do the practical work. Think of how we learn how to ride a bicycle. When I ch tell my child, you know, I want to teach my daughter how to ride a bicycle, and I explain to her what she needs to do. That's not where the learning happens. The learning happens when she gets on the bike and she tries and she fails and she tries but again. But what sort of? So what computers do is they create a standard around that lecture and they make the practical work, the classroom work, instead of being homework. So this is something called the flipped classroom model. It has been very successfully tried in many countries in the world. It's being broadly adopted around the world. And we believe that it should be broadly adopted in India. And that's the only way before the demographic advantage turns into a demographic nightmare. What sort of value is, say, a tablet like Akash creating? Because, for example, your NCRT course, it's, al it's, it's already in the, o I mean, it's in the books, textbooks also. Sure. So if you go online, what difference does it create? Oh, big difference. Because a lot of the learning doesn't happen just by reading. It happens through videos, it happens through video examples, it happens through collaboration, it happens through testing, it happens through access to information. Why do we build libraries as an example? Because we want kids to have access to that information. This is the whole purpose. The idea is to allow them access to information, access to research, access to collaboration. Look at the power of the internet. The growth in patent filings has exponentially increased in direct correlation to the deployment of the internet globally. And the reason is that the ability to do research now has become that much easier and faster because I can be in you know, a village outside of Roper and have the access to the same level of information that the professor sitting at Stanford University does. But coming to Akash tablets mm -hmm. specifically, there have been quality issues in the sense you've been talking of speed, you've been talking of you know, wireless connections, but, but uh, A, schools face a challenge of not being Wi-Fi connected. But, but they say the tablets have issues with all this very poor battery backup. Since it's low cost, they don't have SIM cards, which you know, can have internet. Uh, quality of uh, you know, reading visibility, the screens is not so good. And all those issues, and especially with uh, the processes are slow, so it takes a lot of time to download, so you're wasting a lot of time. Time, you know. Mm -hmm. So how 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 are you kind of meeting all these challenges? So, so let me explain some of the chronology of this this project. The project originally started back in 2010, when IIT Rajasthan created a specification for a tablet. We won a tender for that specification at the start of 2011. That product got created and launched at the end of 2011. Now in technology. Things move in a very fast pace that change every six months. But a spec that IIT Rajasthan created in 2010, now we were in the middle of 2010, that was already very low because it was intended to be for a 2,000 rupee device. It was intended to be for a $35 device, which was unheard of. You know, large companies in the world had, had failed, unanimously failed in trying to create these low cost devices. So we weren't trying to create an iPad killer, but we were trying to create something that broke the price barrier, that delivered the internet and delivered the HD video. And at that point, it was based on that first spec. Then in 2012, the pro tr product project got transferred to IIT Bombay. With IIT Bombay, we put up new specs. We said, look, for this stage, the specs need to be different. So after middle of 2012, it went to Akash 2. Akash 2 and Akash 3 were very different than Akash 1. The first big difference was that they had a Cortex-A8 1 gigahertz processor. Now, a Cortex-A8 1 gigahertz processor is the same caliber of processor as the original iPad, same caliber. So if somebody says that that's slow, it's a tenth of the price or less. We delivered 100,000 units to IIT Bombay for 2,263 rupees. Okay? That's less than what people buy a regular phone for. That's less than what you know, most of us pay for a pizza party uh, on a weekend. Okay? We created a device with the same caliber of processor as the original iPad, a Cortex A8 1 gig processor, and delivered for 2,263. So the processor wasn't an issue. The battery life was three hours. You, some may think that's enough. Some may think that that's not enough. But that's the tender requirement was three hours. It had 512 megabytes of RAM. That's double the RAM of the original iPad, despite being one-tenth of the price. What we did with that product was we said, you know what? Let's take it to the most rigorous testing entities in the world. 
let's take it to the media that gets to see the next iPad before anybody else in the world gets to see the iPad. Let's take it to Forbes, let's take it to VentureBeat, let's get, take it to Engadget in the US, in Silicon Valley, and see what they think before we take it anywhere else. The response from Forbes was, this is world changing. The response from VentureBeat was that this will, 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 will revolutionize how technology gets adopted, especially in the developing world. Response on Akash 2 was very significant. We wanted to pitch the government that Wi-Fi is not enough. The government said, look, our first pilots and tests are in colleges and universities where we've deployed Wi-Fi. So we think Wi-Fi is good enough, but we pushed hard that you need mobile connectivity and you need SIM connectivity. So Akash 3, which we delivered to the government, had SIM connectivity. Now the government has completed the tender for Akash 4. Akash 4 comes with a SIM and Bluetooth functionality. So, so Because there is a certain kind of an allegation that government of India is actually failing to meet quality standards. In what? In terms of, you know, uh, collaborating with Akash. There have How been a lot that? of news reports because of all these things, but now you're, you're mentioning yeah, that so, you've so, kind but, of But remember, taken these, care these of are new reports, news reports, but you know, well, either I just in have 2011 one question. Or, or early 2012. Okay, compared to an iPad, for example, uh -huh. right? If I had, a, if the students had an iPad yeah. and students had the Akash tablet, the Akash yes. 4, Will there be a difference in learning experience? Of course or not. It's, it'll be Let the me same. explain. Uh, I was, with Akash 2, I was looking at and explaining to you the processing speed being similar or at the same, the same caliber of processor as the original iPad. The Akash 4 has a Cortex-A7, 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor and a gigabyte of RAM. It has the same level of horsepower as the current iPad at one-tenth of the price. So when we think of a learning experience, there's no difference, okay? It doesn't have an Apple brand on it, okay? Uh, it may not come with as fancy a box as Apple does, but it doesn't matter. It's a tenth of the price, and it impacts their education in a manner that nothing else one can. One of the questions that is being asked is that governments are spending so much on tablets, whereas, you know, there is lack of infrastructure in schools. If Governments just spend that money on infrastructure. Maybe the growing up and learning experiences so, would be much better. So, so that's not what the educational industry is saying. That's what people outside that don't understand education in India are saying. Look at what happens in villages. A th statistics show you that as much as a third of village schools don't have a teacher. If you go to YouTube and you type in Indian teacher funny, you get all these videos of schools where cameras, TV stations like yours, go out into villages and try to look at teachers and they quiz teachers and show the quality of teachers that exist. It isn't that there are not enough schools. That's not the problem. It is the quality of education. Try to address this issue of how much money has been spent on tabs. How much money do you think has been spent on tabs? It's, it's less than what the President of India does on an excursion abroad. That's it, one excursion. You know, when the last president of India got criticism because her excursions or trips abroad were being expensive, the numbers that they talked about for one trip exceeds the amount that they've spent on tablets till today. And by spending that little amount, okay, less than 20 crores, that's it, okay? The government received 100,000 devices created an industry that didn't exist. From 250,000 units to four and a half million units, created an industry that's half the size of the PC industry, okay? The government pays for teachers that don't show up in schools. Uh, if you have kids and you tell me that they go to a public school, so I'd be very tabs, impressed. So are these tabs People going to replace teachers? No, this is the thing. You know, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, famous fi science fiction writer said once, he said, machines that can replace teachers really should. But the reality is machines can't replace teachers. The idea is to empower teachers and empower students, and empower students that want to learn, right? You and know, and deliver better quality education to both. Th think of this, okay? The cost of one of these devices to the government without, if you remove the duties portion of it and so on, is approximately 2,000 rupees, right? In that kind of a range. Tell me, what do you get in India for 2,000 rupees? Do you think that it is worth the 2,000 rupees 
to empower that kid with access to the internet and video lectures and all that amount of educational content. Fair enough, okay. fair enough. You know, in the sense that I relate to, you know, maybe a tablet as what our original slate was, but a tablet comes with much more opportunities. But there are also other concerns with vis-a-vis -vis teachers, vis-a-vis -vis parents, and vis-a-vis -vis social uh -huh. scientists. Uh, one of the concerns is that how do you monitor these tabs in the sense, in terms of pornography, in terms of unwanted material, um, how, how, when we are handing over such technology, how, how does one handle that? So, so there are net nanny and a lot of applications that restrict those kinds of applications if you want to restrict those applications. But it doesn't happen at some state, for of example, course. if you block Google, Bing comes up. Um, is, sure. is Akash for equipped to sure. handle so, artificial so, intelligence so, issues? So, so there are applications that restrict those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, right, is that what's essential? What we're trying to do no, is... It, it, these are what, what concerns which are no, no, thrown no, by I understand, people from but, different, different but what aspects. But we, what we're trying to do is we're saying, let's throw the baby out with the bathwater. This is the reality, okay? Your phones have the same kind of restrictions and same kind of difficulties, yet parents give 10-year-olds phones because they believe it adds security to it. And those phones have the same kinds Coming of limitations. Coming down to the phone issues, the medical uh -huh. world also, in fact, uh -huh. has... Uh, they have a view that because of texting which was their initial law. There has been this deficiency in attention, you know, which is becoming a huge problem among children, especially in America also. Mm -hmm. Technology is leading to all this. So are these concerns being addressed by governments or, you know, when you launch I, these products? I don't products? think they're real concerns. Why? Uh, they're not real concerns. Uh, t tell me something. If you really think, right, that there's education, that there's attention deficiency in the U.S., you've got to look at the productivity levels of the U.S. compared to India. You've got to look at the educational results of that environment that compared to India, right? So, so the environment that they're getting educated in maybe is somewhat different than what is in India, and maybe there's a reason that they're succeeding in areas that we're not, and we should look at what those reasons are. What is the digital gap in India vis-a-vis -vis, uh, urban and villages, if you were to talk? Huge. Look, throughout, throughout India, the total number of people is 1.2 billion people. And at best, the most optimistic scenarios talk about 10% internet penetration. That's but horrible. If we were to compare uh, the digital divide between, say, India and the West, say, for example, Canada, uh -huh. what sort of a digital device exists, say, in schools in Canada and schools here? I in Canada, 77% of the people have broadband access at home. In India, 1.2% of homes have broadband access at home. That's the difference. 1.2%. In a country of 1.2 billion people, 13 million broadband connections exist. This is what the latest TRI report shows. 13 million broadband connections against 1.2 billion people. Canada, out of 33 million people, 27 million people have broadband access at home. It, it's, it's a day and night difference. My last question. Obviously, there are pilot projects, and you've been, mm -hmm. meet, you've been going to schools which you know, have your tablets. How have the children benefited till now? What has been their experience? Huge. Huge. The schools that are adopting it are seeing kids take to it, are seeing kids want to use it, are seeing kids that w otherwise wouldn't open a book read the same book in an electronic format just because of that environment. I've, we're seeing kids that are doing experimentation and, 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 and collaboration at a level that wasn't possible before. And not just India. This is no longer an Indian revolution. Do you think your these products, the tabs, or something else may come in the future. Is going to replace the bag, or is it just going to be another thing in the school bag? It's going to replace a lot of things in the bag. It may not replace everything in that bag, but it'll certainly replace a lot of things in that bag. Uh, carrying 30 pounds worth of, uh, of books is, is just ridiculous. It just doesn't make sense anymore, especially when you can have them and, and a thousand times more access electronically in the palm of your hand. It doesn't make sense to cut down trees when the whole world talks about global warming and all those kinds of things. So certainly for that reason alone, it'll, it'll have an impact. The world, everywhere on the world, there are 43 countries right now that are doing broad scale deployments. The government of Thailand is putting out four or five million tabs a year to make sure that every child in that country will have a tablet. The government of Turkey has started a, started a project called the Fateh Project, where every child in that country will have a tablet. Same thing in Mexico, in Nicaragua, in Ecuador, in Uruguay. Uh, there are 43 countries. We're working in 30, 13 of them that are doing broad-scale deployments. 
So this is not just an India thing, okay? In India, there's a billion people that are forgotten by the mainstream 200 million at the top. And unless we figure out how to educate and economically skill this young demographic in India, we're sitting on a time bomb. And the only way we can do it is through technology. And the only way we can do it is through affordable technology. Thank you, Mr. Hey, Thank thanks you so for much. having me. खबरों की दुनिया में आइए हमारे साथ कहीं भी और कभी भी जुड़िए हम मिलेंगे फेसबुक पर हम दिखेंगे यूट्यूब पर हमें फॉलो कीजिए ट्विटर पर खबरों के साथ बने रहिए रात दिन